the closet, then it comes out. But it's like all the harbingers, you know. It makes no sense that people would do it, and yet they do it, right. you know. And we're watching, like, if you go back in America's history, watching where, you know, darkness was kind of out of the, you know, on the, on the margins, and God's people, the culture was, quote, Christian. Mm. Now we're watching all those forces that were against God, atheism, immorality, all those coming into the mainstream while Christians are being pushed to the margin. Okay, let's go on yes. this harbinger mm. of Baal. Yes. Can yeah. we talk about yes. that? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> and this is major. This is only in the last month or so that this happened. And it had to set the, the groundwork for this, and that is that in the last days of ancient Israel, you know, here's a nation that was founded by God and turned away from him, and it turned from God to particularly one particular God, which is the God in Hebrew called Baal, and we read it as Baal. Now, who was he, or who was this God? Baal was the God of storms, of thunder, of fertility, of carnality. Um, sometimes he's depicted as a man with a conical hat. You may even have some images there. Um, sometimes he's casting lightning bolts, as he, as, and sometimes he's, he's actually depicted with a bullhead there. And as the Israelites settled into the land and they saw the Canaanites worshiping Baal, they saw Baal as the god of prosperity, that he's going to make them richer, he's going to make their lands fertile. And so, and unlike God, they could touch him, they could create him, they could, he was sensual. He was, mm. you, know, you know, and he was linked to a god, a goddess called Ashtoreth. You read about this in the Bible, Ashtoreth or Asherah. And so a lot of his worship was linked to sexual immorality. They'd have ritual sex, they'd have prostitutes. They celebrated sexual immorality. They had these rituals. He was linked to all that. He was linked to actually male prostitutes. Baal worship involved the murder of children. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the worship where they lifted up their children on the, on the altar of Baal because they, they thought it would be, make them more prosperous. The, the God would receive this and would bless them back. So they actually offered their children, and this is why judgment came to Israel. Um, so here is this progression. It began seeping in. The, the, the worship of Baal first started, it was an underground thing. It was, it was in the shadows. It was in the closet. It was something that, well, they weren't supposed to do, but some people were doing it. But then they started Let's be, let's be a little bit more tolerant. Let, let's let these things in. We'll get, we'll have more. We can't be so, we can't be so much with God. It can't just be this one way. There are other ways and maybe this will help us. So they started adding Baal to the worship of, of God. They started adding prosperity to the worship of God and saying, saying now, now we're going to join them together. We'll keep God, but we're going to add Baal. So that's what they did. And so they started corrupting their worship. They started corrupting their faith. And then as the worship of Baal grew stronger, it became more brazen. It became more intolerant. Now it said, there's no other gods but Baal. That's how, it, that's how it happened. So first, it was tolerance, and then once Baal got in, it was now you cannot worship God anymore. Mm -hmm. And so especially at the time of King Ahab and Jezebel, the worship of Baal now reached the critical point where it started taking over the culture. Now the priests of Baal, who before they would have been in the shadows, now they're lifted up into government. Now they're lifted up oh. to the throne of Jezebel. And now the people who are not following Baal, now they're hunted down. Here they, they would have been the heroes of the culture. Now they are the contraband. Oh. Elijah, the prophets in hiding. And the worship of Baal, we get a little taste of it when Elijah's on Mount Carmel and the, the priests of Baal start going into this frenzy. It says they start cutting themselves. Total pagan things. And now Baal had this showdown with Elijah, you know, uh, on, on Mount Carmel and God showed himself. But the kingdom never stopped worshiping Baal. And so years later, it started, it started getting more and more again until the kingdom was destroyed. The first kingdom to be destroyed, northern kingdom. The northern kingdom is the kingdom of the harbingers. So when the harbingers, when we're reading about the harbingers, we're reading about they are worshiping Baal when the harbingers are coming. Baal is the god at the time of the harbingers. They're worshiping Baal when they get judged. Baal, so put it all together, he's the god of sexual immorality. He's the god of greed. He's the God of the, sac the offering up of your children. He's the God of persecuting God's people. He's the anti-God. He's the anti-Lord. He's the substitute. When you turn away from God, that's where you go. So he, and, and actually, and from Baal, we get the word Baalzebub. That's where we get the word for Satan. Oh. It, from this, yeah. Baal Zavuv, Lord of the Flies, becomes Baalzebub. So all that comes from Baal. So the enemy is behind it, but Baal is the one. So, so get, let's put this together. The days of the harbingers are the days of Baal. Mm. So could 
the sign of Baal manifest in America. See, the Baal is there with a, the head of a bull. Yeah. He was often depicted that way, and they're, they're lifting up their children to Baal. That mm -hmm. is the, when the Israelites turned away from God. America was, was patterned after Israel. And so we know it. John Winthrop, when he, when he was sailing to, to America, that Puritan, at the very beginning on the ship called the Arbella, he wrote, the, he penned this sermon called City on the Hill, or actually, that's how we, we, we name it. That's where you get City on the Hill. That Ronald Reagan got it from John Winthrop. John Winthrop said, we shall be, we are as a city on a hill, and all nations will look upon it. And if we follow our God, the God of Israel, then we will become the most blessed people on earth. We will become the most powerful military people on earth. Our enemies will run from us. We will become blessed in all, all that we do. We'll become just like Israel. The blessings of Israel will come upon us because the God of Israel will be with us. That's what he said. But he gave a prophetic warning. And what he said was, if we shall turn away from God and shall be seduced and worship other gods, he names them as our God of pleasures and profit, is what he said. And we, we, he says they are gods. If you worship, you, you serve pleasure, you serve profit, you are serving other gods. He said, if we do this, then the judgments that came on Israel will come upon us which is basically, that's where the harbinger kicks wow. in. So here's the thing, America, here we have, we're created as Israel. Now we've been turning away. When you turn away from God, you always turn to Baal in some way. So what have we seen in our culture? We have seen the worship of sexual immorality. Yes. Not only that, remember in Baal worship, it was also the celebration, the sake, making sanctity of what is immoral. So it's, it's a culture in Baal worship literally celebrating, saying this is holy, this is great that we are immoral. And it included sexual immorality, included homosexuality, and it included also offering up its children. Spirit of Baal, we, have, we mentioned this yeah. before. You know, Israel offered no. up thousands of children. We have offered up 60 million unborn children. Here's the spirit of Baal. And so all those things, and then you have the hunting, the persecuting of the righteous. Well, that spirit of Baal is happening now. Yes. We're beginning to see the culture calling believers marginalizing them saying you're hateful you're intolerant we will not tolerate you anymore actually throwing some in jail here it's all happening so could the sign of Baal the harbinger of Baal actually appear in this land now it would seem totally unlikely I mean who even you know except for believers who even knows about Baal I mean he's an obscure Middle Eastern God except you read him in the Bible but the fact is it happened. Where originally they were going to do it, they got so much uproar to this that it seems they stopped talking about it and they just kind of canceled it. But then all of a sudden it reappears and it was almost like secretly. They didn't make a big deal. They just said, listen, be here at this time in the city. I happened to see it because somebody from our congregation happened to see it and they, they sent it to me while I was upstairs here last time. So they gave the date, they gave the time, and I witnessed it. And I filmed it, we'll show it in a few moments, filmed what happened. I'm going to tell you what happened there that was not in the media. And first of all, what was it? What they did is they took in the, from the Middle Eastern city of Palmyra, Syria, there was the arch of Baal, the arch that through which the worshipers of Baal would enter the temple of Baal and worship Baal. They had to pass through this arch, the arch of Baal. They were actually, that city of Palmyra is the center of two of the great temples of Baal. One, one was called Baal Shamim, Baal of Heaven. Uh, the other was called the Temple of Baal, but Baal is Baal, it's the same, the same thing. So here, so here they, they took a recreation of the arch, they recreated it on American soil on September 19th, 2016. It was unveiled, the ceremony took place in New York City. New York City, the city of the harbingers, you know, so now you have yes. this. Yes. Not only that, New York City, the city where abortion began, was first legalized. The city, the capital, the abortion capital of America, Baal. Baal. Wow. So oh. here they do it there. It was a rainy wow. Monday afternoon. There were some dignitaries there. There were some me there were media people filming it. The few witnesses, a few, a few Christians were there just to witness it. They found out about it. The arch was veiled up, covered in a sheet. Um, at the base of the arch was a sign that said Temple of Bell. To right at the bottom of the arch there. And actually, if you have any images, you can put it up. Okay. That is the veiled arch of Baal right there in New York City. It's on City Hall Park right next to the, the center of the government of New York City. They may even have a picture of the plate that, said, that says Temple of Baal, which is Baal. Identified. And so they were playing Middle Eastern music there. Middle mm. Eastern music that you could imagine was played at the worship of Baal.
Oh. I mean, it sounded like you were in the Middle East, and it could have been a celebration of Baal. And so that, they, you had the musicians there. Then you had a man speak, and the man said that this arch, of all places in the world, belongs in New York City. The other one who spoke was the deputy mayor of New York. They took off the sheets. People were applauding, applauding, and actually... You might even have a clip that we took of that moment. So this is, this is eyewitness. What you will see on American soil is the sign of Baal. How could somebody think of even that? It's a symbol. Yes, this is a sign of a nation that has once known God, that has turned away from God, that now calls evil good and good evil, that now promotes immorality, that now offers its children, that now persecutes the righteous. This is a nation that was once formed as Israel doing the same thing, and now the arch of the God that Israel worshipped is here and the thing is that it's like the harbingers like you know what why did they do the harbingers why did why did they speak judgment when they didn't even know what they were saying they didn't know what they were doing that's right and it's but it's always some reason something that has nothing to do with anything what they was there was an organization that said you know we're going to preserve these great these great monuments and we're going to put this here and the thing is that there, there's more to it because when the harbinger what was it that they did? They didn't just build, they were rebuilding something that was destroyed. We will rebuild with hewn stone. That's, that's the spirit of the harbinger. We will rebuild. Well, the thing was, the Arch of Baal was destroyed that year in Syria. And so they said in America, we're going to rebuild the Arch of Baal. Uh -huh. Just like in the harbinger, it actually says that that King Ahab built the temple of Baal in Samaria. Now, Samaria is the city that the, Assyri that the harbinger is linked to, that we will rebuild is linked to. And so when, when the Assyrians came in and they destroyed things, they undoubtedly would have destroyed shrines of Baal as well because the Israelites were worshiping Baal when that happened. If you read the harbinger in it, you know that there's a section that talks about, it says the people do this in the spirit of defiance. Every commentary almost on Isaiah 9, 10 says they're, they're, it's defiance, it's the spirit of defiance. When one of the harbingers appeared in New York City, when they put that stone, that, that Gazit stone, the uh, governor of New York said, we are doing this in the, as a, in the spirit of defiance. The deputy mayor of New York heralded to celebrate the opening up of the Arch of Baal, the erection of, the, of, the, of this arch. She said, quote, you wouldn't hear this in the, in the media, it said, we are doing this as an act of defiance. <gasps> oh. We recorded that. Wow. Act of defiance. But not only that, in the harbinger, what are they rebuilding? They're rebuilding something that was destroyed by the Assyrians. The Arch of Baal was destroyed by ISIS. ISIS are the descendants of the Assyrians. They are the modern day Assyrians. We've talked about that. Yes. So now we're literally rebuilding what the Assyrians destroyed as in the harbinger. And it was actually destroyed in Syria, which is part of the Assyrian Empire from the Harbinger. The Harbingers have not stopped. Now, this is getting, this is getting very, you know, I say very exact and very precise. You know, you have 9-11, that's the Harbinger and all was connected. And you see this, this horrible thing of 9-11. And now the very spirit and people of 9-11, yes. they're the ones that are coming in the southern borders coming in and coming in and planning to destroy us from within i, I mean and then to bring in this arch yes yeah and and it's you know it's amazing because the arch what it's saying is and it, it, it really it reveals everything because through just the way Baal got into israel Baal got into america you know first first things that we were saying in that are in the shadows immorality all these things anti-christian all of a sudden they start saying, well, let's be tolerant of it. Let's, let's add it in. Yeah. Oh, Let, yeah. let's, let's mix a little with the worship of God. And then as it gets stronger, what happens, to this, what happens to this spirit? It says, now there is no room for God. Now we're going to legislate you out. We're coming in where God w what used to be. We're going to come into your schools. You drove him out of there. We're going to come to your children. But this is happening. It's happening. This is and where happening. we are now. Yes, yes. It's happening at every moment. And look what's happening. We're, we've been more brazen about abortion. That's the sin of Baal. Yes. That's the sin. So at the same time, 
time all that's happening, the, the sign of Baal appears in New York. Instead of our real enemies, they're making the Christians mm -hmm. the enemies, and so we have become the enemy. But that's exactly what happened in the last days of Israel and in the template. They started saying mm -hmm. that you, the believers, you're the dangerous ones. What did they say when they were worshiping Baal? Ahab went to Elijah and said, you are the troublemaker of Israel. And Elijah said, no, no, you are. <laughs> I'm not. Mm -hmm. You are. And, and the thing is that, so they started calling the prophets the dangerous ones. You know, that, yes. they called they call yes. Jeremiah dangerous, un yeah. unpatriotic. They put him in jail. <laughs> they put him in jail. When the judgment came, he was there in jail. So, so that's exactly the sign of the last a, days. Oh, that's a dark a picture. We don't want to hear. They don't want to hear what the prophets no, say. No, and they went, God said, here you are. You are going after the ways of, of the nations. You, you're worshiping the Assyrian gods. You're going to worship all that. You're worshiping that which is against you. God says, okay, you want the Assyrians? You want their? You're going to get them. Hmm. And that's what happened. Is this arch a sign? For, is this is God letting them do this? Is this, I mean, like the enemy comes right in and puts this in New York City? Yeah. And it, and it is as, the, as people say things and they don't realize why they're saying them. When yes. the guy said, of all the places on earth, it belongs in New York City. He said more than he knew. You know, this, this is where, this is where, this is the abortion. This is all these things began there. You know, you know and, and so much of immorality as also movements began there. So this is, this is, you know, I don't believe anybody, it's just like with the harbingers, nobody's putting it, it's a spiritual thing. It's a prophetic thing. It's a prophetic sign of what's actually happening in our culture. But there it is. There it is. I mean, who would think of all things, why? You know, but why all those things? You know, why? Why, why do they put up a song? Why do, why do they quote from Isaiah 910, which is judgment? on America. Why do they do that? They don't know why they're doing it, but the harbingers must manifest. Wow. This, is, this, is, this is the sign. We are in the days of Baal. But I don't want to leave it like that. The answer is that Elijah gives us the paradigm, the, the model of how to respond to all these things. I mean, in everything. It's without fear. It's with total boldness. Yeah. It's total chutzpah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's refusing to be redefined by the culture, but saying, no, 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 that's not what it is. Just like he, go, he goes right to Ahab. He goes right to Jesus. It's time for the church to arise and yes. become the yes. church again. That's what God will anoint. That's what God will anoint. In other words, we're moving, I would say, that, I would put it this way. There's a David stage, and the David stage is when, when righteousness rules a culture. And it used to be in America that righteousness, you know, would rule, you know, mm -hmm. you know that, that we still respected it. But then if it goes to a, an Ahab stage, that means the church has to move to an Elijah stage. And so what it means is that our faith has to move from being status quo oh, wow. to prophetic, mm. to, from status quo comfortable to revolutionary. Yes. You know, from, yes. you know, you know we have I mean, to be that's more what powerful. God is saying to his church. Yes. So rise, so rise, yes. so rise up again. That's it. And, and it, it's that very darkness that's going to trigger the only the, trigger thing, light, trigger yeah. powerful, Our, great lives if we will be responding the to The only it. thing they fear is the power of the church. That's my whole life. I've seen it. They want to destroy the power because the church elected presidents. The church coming together can do anything. The church oh, that's right. can literally, together, we can take care of the poor. We can take care of any emergencies. That's right. And That's they right. fear the church. They don't want God to get any glory for anything. That is the spirit of Baal, you know, which again we get Beelzebub because the enemy fears the church. How can the most wicked God of the Old Testament end up in New York City a few weeks ago? Mm. This God, Baal, has a, a head of a bull. Yes. Could, could that have anything to do with <laughs> uh, the bull markets? I, I, and, and I, had a, I had another image i took it out because i didn't want to do too much but but you can't um, do too much <laughs> but, here but but the thing, they, but I'll, all right maybe tomorrow <laughs> but here, i'll tell you that very interesting yes. is that one of the signs when a nation turned away from god think about it when the israelites turned away from god when they came out of egypt they made a molten calf when yes. jeroboam said israel turn away from god we have a new god for you what did he do he set up golden calf or golden or a molten bull so one of the signs of baal was uh -huh. a molten bull 
what appeared in New York City. You go to New York City, same place, you'll find a molten bull. You go to Wall Street, that fame, that's a molten bull. But that's, that's a sign of, hey, we're going to be prosperous, we're going to do this. But, but it's also a sign in the Bible of a nation that is turning away from God. That happened in the middle of our oh. turning, and now, this is, now we're getting the actual Arch of Baal. But that, they were actually not so far from each other. The Arch of Baal was not so far from that, that molten bull. What is going to happen next? What are we going to do? What's going to happen? Because God does not, God cannot wink at what America is doing. Yeah. How long do we have, Rabbi? What's, well, <laughs> what's, I know you can't answer well, yeah. all these, but I just, people want to know. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I, the question is, how much more can we do to provoke the wrath of God? How much mm. more? How much more could we do than we yeah. did the summer before last when we lit up the White House in the colors of desecration. How much more can we do in the face of God? God is long-suffering. We know that. He go, you know, and, and some of the prophets said, why, Lord, how are you? David said, when are you going to do it? The point is, he's long-suffering, but there comes a point. And we know, listen, the, the Bible says it. I don't care what your belief is. I don't care what your domination is. That you, you progress, you break all of God's ways. You are heading for judgment. That is, judgment is coming. Yeah. The timing is in his hand. We pray for revival before the judgment, or we pray for revival after a shaking. But we pray for that. But we are, the point is what we are seeing right now, I'll, I'll just to sum it up, we are clearly following that template that be begins in the harbinger. It continues. We have not stopped. If anything, we've accelerated. We're racing now. So how long? That's in God's hands, but we are heading there. And those who aren't saved, I would not feel safe today if I wasn't saved because to live in such a time as this. For believers, we are not to fear because God, the, the, he will match more than match the darkness with the power and the anointing mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. Uh, so, but we are clearly, I mean, if anything, we're seeing every single sign. Every, sin, every single sign. Yeah. And we hated of all nations for his name's sake. Yes. They did a study after World War II. How many... How many Americans had a biblical worldview? Not, not Christian, more than Christian, bi real biblical worldview. That means they were really Christian. 60%. Mm -hmm. They did it again for millennials now, same study. They found out how many? 1%. 1%. Uh, 1%. Wow. 1% 1 had matched as a biblical worldview. Uh, another statistic here. Yeah. When we were, say, in the 1960s, how many children were born out of wedlock? 5%. Mm -hmm. Now 40%, but under, under the mother is about 25 to 31 years old, 60%. Our children are being born not even knowing what a mother and father is in a covenant. Not even knowing that. You know, but on the other hand, on the other hand, on the other hand, and yeah. that's why there's a war against it. That's why, yeah. that's, why, yeah. that's why the darkness hates the light. That's right. why, because we're a conviction. We're like Elijah to Ahab. That's why. But, but God will bless the Elijahs, mm -hmm. you know. And the thing, is that, that the thing is that still the word of God will never, will, that no matter what the darkness does, it's never going to stop the word of God. That's right. Never going to stop the word of God. Amen. And the other thing is we have all these believers, most of our lives we're playing like, I want to live in biblical times. I wish I could live in biblical times. <laughs> Congratulations, because we're living in biblical times. This is it. Yeah. Same dynamics. Same dynamics as Jeremiah. That's why we have a burden. Same dynamics as Elijah. That's why we're fired up. But that's why. But we have to be. We have to rise to that call. Yes, we do. The one thing that can trigger, trigger one of the final things mm. is how we treat Israel. Absolutely. And, and we're not like a heathen nation. We we're supposed to know better. Mm. Interesting, you know, because we're saying we were founded after the pattern of Israel. Now America is actually dealing with a real Israel. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if you hurt that Israel, it's like a double thing because you were founded as Israel. You'll hurt yourself. But now there's a concern that Obama, once he is freed from this election, having to, he may, he may abandon Israel at the UN when this vote comes up. That's the concern even Netanyahu Met, warned of it, so we shall uh, see. We we discussed uh, Baal. Yes. And it seems like we're in the age of Baal. Yes. We're in the age of, of people turning to the things of the devil, the sin. Do you have anything new today? Yeah. yeah. For those who don't know, let me just quickly, not for the people who are just turning in. Yes. In a nutshell, as you said, Jim, that in the, in the days of Israel's apostasy, they turned away from God, and who do they turn to? This God called Baal, which actually means master, Lord. When you turn away from God, you're turning to another master, and one that's and so Baal or Baal, and he's the God of sexual immorality. He's the God of of call, of 
of hating God. He's the God of, of greed, and he promised prosperity. He's the God that they offered their children as sacrifices to. He's the God that they, they he actually, in his worship, you have a picture there of that happening. That's a, that's a picture of Baal, literally offering up their children to get prosperity. He's the God who, in his worship, you actually had, you actually had sexual sin celebrated as holy, as part of it. And he's the God by which Elijah and the prophets were hunted down when a nation calls good evil and evil good. So the thing is, for those who know the harbinger, the harbinger is the template that what happened in Israel is happening in America. So, so what happened is when the harbingers appeared, what happened, who were they worshiping? Baal. He's behind it in a sense. Mm -hmm. He's who they were worshiping Baal. So could there, we asked last time, could mm -hmm. the sign of Baal appear in America on American soil? Be, because the spirit of Baal is here because we're watching America turn away from God, turn to immorality, turn to calling evil good, turn to celebrating what is wrong, turn to, to offering up 60 million children, turn to persecuting the, the righteous, all these things. When you turn away from God, in some way you turn to the spirit of Baal. And remember, reminder, from Baal you get Beelzebub. So it's ultimately him behind that mask. So here, so could it be, and last time what we saw, for those who don't know, it just happened about a month ago in New York City, he manifested the, the harbinger of Baal. The arch of Baal was erected in New York City, the arch through which the worshipers of Baal went through to worship Baal. I was there. We played a clip last time of the unveiling of it with Middle Eastern music, with the, 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 the deputy mayor of New York, you know, dedicating it, mm -hmm. saying, saying we are doing this as an act of defiance, um, and they're actually rebuilding. We, we we're doing what, what harbinger is that we will rebuild. In Harbinger, they're rebuilding what the Assyrians destroyed. They were rebuilding what ISIS, who are the Assyrians, destroyed in Syria. So here this thing comes up in New York City. Now, so here's, now here's what I say. I was led to try something. When I went down there, I said to our media person who was, who was filming, I said, let's, let's just see something. They put, the, they put the arch, you know, in a certain place in New York City. Now the arch in, from Syria, it came from the Middle East, and it was the arch, I said, that led to the Temple of Baal. Actually, there were two major temples of Baal that the arch was right in the middle of. So I said, what would, let's try something. What would happen if, you, if we go down there, see where the arch is, and let's see which, which direction it's facing. I told them, you got to get this exact to the down to the degree. you got to do this on Google Maps. you got to do it on satellite. Get the exact footage up to find out where the Temple of Baal was. Because, and so, in other words, the, the arch is facing, it's going to point to wherever the Temple of Baal is. So if they're doing this in New York City... Would it find anything? Would anything happen? Would it point us to anything if, it, if we put this and we walk the exact amount of feet? So we did it. And you know where it led us to? What? It led us to ground zero. Oh! Wow. You're kidding. They may have an image where it has a line, a red line, that shows it going right to there. It led us to the place of the harbingers. That's, that's where the temple of Baal would have been. The arch was pointing. They put the arch of Baal... They put it where if you took a picture facing that way, you would actually see St. Paul's Chapel through the arch. That's how close they put that Amazing. to ground zero. But we, we did the exact footage. Did they do it on purpose? I don't, I don't think they knew what they were doing anymore with the harbingers. We're talking about how this is linked to the harbingers. They're saying we will rebuild and the Assyrians. Well, it took us to the exact spot where they, America said we will rebuild. The exact spot where we, it all began. The sign that it's all there, it's all, it's all the same thing, it's all together. The harbingers have not stopped. They have progressed. And, and so because the nation has, and I'm going to share something a li little later about a, a thing that also blew me away when I, we, we started searching. Something that has to do with this, but that is, hidden, in a sense, hidden in Washington, D.C. Since I was first here mm -hmm. with the harbinger, the, the harbingers and the template have not stopped. Not, not only with the signs, because a lot of things, a lot of things happen, first of all, things happened after 9-11. There were things that happened after the book came out, you know, and including the president, doing, and including other things. But also, we're watching America go down the same road as Israel, which is, which is defiance, as you said. And this, I mean, it goes back to when, when Tom Daschle actually proclaimed it the day after 9-11, saying, this is what we will do. And he proclaimed Isaiah 9-10. And the signs have continued. This is a more, a kind of more ex in your face sign. This is a more exact. Yeah. It's not that they're only because they, they rebuilt the tower. They rebuilt, they put the stone, they did this. They said the words, they pronounced Isaiah 9-10. They pronounced judgment. I, uh, the, uh, the president signed the words on top of the tower of the words of defiance, all that. But now you got bad. 
I mean, and I mean that's pretty pretty blatant. I mean, Baal, uh, and that is exactly what they what Israel was doing when they were destroyed. How many warnings do you get? That's that's his his decision. All the signs of the last days are in effect. Yeah. And this arch, the odds of mm. that arch appearing in New York City. The, and here you're saying it was laid out exactly. If you look through this arch now, what do you see? You, you, would, you would see St. Paul's Chapel right through the arch. And I didn't even realize it at first. I'm taking pictures. And they said, do you realize what that is? And then when you take the exact, when you take where the Temple of Baal was, it leads you exactly to ground zero. Because yeah. people don't understand how could something be of God? Like how could the tower coming down be of God when people say, well, God wouldn't do that? Yeah, yeah, it's it's not that he, he it, it, evil men did it, but he allowed it. He allowed it yeah. in the same way, you know, uh, Anne Graham, she said yeah. probably eloquently, said, you know, here we drive God out of out of our culture, out of our schools, out of, and then he's a gentleman, and he said, okay, and then we ask, where's God? Where's God? You yes. Know? Right. He allowed it, just like sometimes we have to allow things, even, even with our children, we have to allow things so to get them back. And so it was a desperate thing. You know, when, when God allowed it to happen to Israel, it was because there was no other way. He already sent his prophets. The prophets came, they, they mocked the prophets. So he allowed it to happen in Israel because it was the, the last kind of last thing before to save them from a greater judgment which they rejected and then the judgment, the judgment came. There was a grace period. You said borrowed time. There was in a sense borrowed time. And then with, with, with Judah, it was the same pattern happened. There was an attack. Then there was 19 years. The other one was 10 years. There's no, you can't say when the thing will happen but we are clearly, clearly following the footsteps of ancient Israel in everything. We have, it's not only that we didn't come back to God, we have raced away from God since 9-11. Mm. Since 9-11, you don't mind, but America's a different nation than when we were growing up. It's a different nation from even 9-11, even from then. You, really have, you have things, you know, and it's racing. So, so we're watching it all happen. I mean, if you had no harbingers, you're still, we're still following exactly that pattern, but you have the harbingers on the top, and I think the harbinger of Baal is saying, now this is where you're at. You're, you are, as you said, you're, you're in the days of Baal now. You're in the days when, when evil is, has been reigning, you're the, when, when the righteous are persecuted, when the nation is brazenly against God, that's what you're in. And that was in the last days of Israel. A nation that was warned at the very beginning. It was warned by John Winthrop, you do this. It was warned by Washington, the smiles of heaven will leave the land when you change the order of God. You know, we were warned. To whom much is given, much is required. And that is the scary thing about America. Is it time for the church to repent? You always time, <laughs> and probably past time, but always time, yes. Mm -hmm. If my people, if my people. I remember that, you know, we were talking about this, you know, but, but in a nutshell, years ago when we were at a horrible point, not, not in the same moral depth we are now, but it was when, you know, at the end of Carter's presidency and everything was falling apart, economy was falling apart, hostages in Iran, it was the, everything was falling apart, the believers gathered together on, Wash, on the Washington Mall under the, under the scripture, if my people, if my people will, recall, will turn from their evil ways. I was there because I just became a believer. I witnessed it all. And they prayed for two things. And the, the two things they prayed for was the release of the hostages and that God would send his people into Washington. Then a few months later, Reagan was swept into power. And, and at the same, the same day, the same hour, the hostages were released and Reagan changed change the place of the presidency to stand on the other side, which has ever been since, on the same place where the believers prayed and they were pointing their hands to where he was standing now. And so now he's, he's looking out and when, when history, you remember this, history changed. I mean, that was the history changed. And that moment he put his hand on the Bible and took the oath. His hand, what was it on? His hand was on, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Same scripture. That's telling you God does listen. Yes. God does yes. honor his, his yes. word. He will honor that. We talked about the sign of Baal, the mystery of Baal, the, that arch there. Yeah. Now I was wondering, because when you look at Israel, and they were always dealing with Baal. He was always in the picture somewhere. I mean, at the end, he took over. It was like a bad seed in the culture. And then they finally let it go, and then it took over everything. Well, I was wondering, could, if America is following the pattern of Israel, could there even be the embedding of this thing, this wavering, this thing with Baal in our history, and yet now it's coming to its fruition, you know? And of course, there's always the spirit, there's always the spirit of greed and sin, that's always been there. Uh, but here's the thing, you know, in ancient Israel, it says Ahab, 
built a temple of Baal mm -hmm. in the capital city in Samaria. So I wondered, could mm. there be something in the capital city? You know, in the capital city, we know there, there are things based on Greece and Rome, you know, with the architecture. Oh, yeah. But it'd be very strange mm -hmm. to find if there was anything there actually based on Baal. I mean, this obscure Middle Eastern god of human sacrifice. I want to show you something, and hopefully they will have the, hopefully in a second they'll have the images ready. It is in our nation's capital, in the nation's capital building, the center of the American government, not just based on Greece and Rome. If you look at the eastern facade, if you have the, the image of the Temple of Baal in Palmyra, if you have that, that is, on the left is the Temple of Baal. Wow. That is the eastern facade of the capital was modeled after the Temple of Baal. Oh my. Wow. wow. That was actually modeled after the Temple of Baal in Palmyra, the same city that they put the arch of that was just destroyed and they just put it up in New York City, same temple. Uh, this oh was there. Goodness. In fact, Thomas Jefferson even, because even, they, they got drawings back and they say, he said, let's do this. So here now get this. This is almost like in Israel, you always have the battle between Baal, but now it's taken over. But there, that one facade, but here's the thing. That, that's the Eastern facade. The Eastern facade is the one, is the facade that faces the Supreme Court. Baal was the one who said, offer up your children in sacrifice. Oh my goodness. When the Supreme Court oh. ruled for the offering up of children, it was facing the temple of Baal, the facade. <laughs> Baal was the God who said, turn away from the God of Israel, desecrate sexuality. When the Supreme Court in 2015, wow. when, it, when it ruled to desecrate marriage, it did so facing the temple of Baal. Wow. I mean, that is incredible. Yeah. It is, and, and that was modeled after the same temple in the same city that ISIS just destroyed, and then we said, let's put it up in New York City. Uh, that, wow. And now saying, now, now that principle is now on the throne of, of the culture. And you said mm. that Baal also represented prosperity, right? He promised, he promised prosperity. prosperity, yes. And it's interesting that in New York, the archway led to what is currently the World Trade Center. Yes. That promises prosperity, yes, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And just like the, the bull we talked about, the molten bull, which is another sign of Baal, is right in front of Wall Street, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. God's saying something. Yeah. Yes. You know, th those, are, yeah. those are witnesses. They're so quiet, they, they, they don't talk until yes. you find them, and then they scream <laughs> yes. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when Reagan switched, switched the inauguration, he switched it from the east side to the west side, and that's where they prayed for revival. That's yes. away from that, away from that. Oh, yeah. That's right. Not that he knew, and it wasn't right, but it was right. But it's, yeah. yeah. You know, none of them knew. No. Hardly. No. I mean, they, no. they, when they used the scriptures of the curse of God yeah. on the days after 9-11. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they Not literally once. prayed a curse on America when they thought they were praying a blessing. Yeah. Speech writers wrote it, prophetic, as we all know. Prophetic, <laughs> yes. just, just like oh. Caiaphas. Oh. Caiaphas, he said, didn't know what he was saying, but it said because of his office, he spoke prophetically when he spoke about Jesus' death. There was one last question, yeah. and yeah. I know our, it was a year and a half. Yes. About the bail. Could you tell yeah. us that before you yeah. go? Yeah, I only realized it after the fact, but... But, you know, I want to give encouragement, as we do, and, and remember, when you hear about the Baal things, remember the days of Baal were also the days of Elijah. <laughs> Powerful. God is calling us to be Elijah's now, and that is bold, that is radical, that is un, unafraid, you know, and what was it about Elijah? He said, I'm not bowing down to this stuff, you know, I am not bowing down to any of it, I am not bowing down to Baal, I'm not bowing down to political correctness, I am only bowing down to God, Amen. and so what I realized is, I, only after the fact, a year and a half before, the Lord opened the door on Capitol Hill, and he's opened the door, it was through the Harbinger, opened the door with this one meeting they have every year by a guy who heard me talk and he said, we got to do this and God opened it. So I, I was asked to speak and I was just led that year, I was just led, I was led to speak about Baal and God and America standing right between the two and choose you this day. And so that was the warning and then a year and a half later came this, came this. 
So as an encouragement, and you know, some have seen it, some have not, but I think they have a clip of about maybe two minutes, but it's the final word about all this. Mm -hmm. okay. Could we roll that? From Capitol Hill to the members of Congress. We've come to a most critical moment as Elijah stood on top of Mount Carmel and cried out to Israel in his hour of decision in between two altars and two gods. His voice now cries out to America and says, choose you this day whom you will serve. 70 years ago, the chaplain of the United States Senate cried out with the same voice and said to this nation, if the Lord be God, then follow him. But if Baal, then follow him and go to hell. There was more.